Okay, so we are going to do the Gerber Daisy. And so these are the pieces you'll need. You'll need a couple of leaves. You can make more if you want to. Um, this is the center, more center, more center. There's actually four pieces that form the center. This is the sepal that goes underneath, and these are your three sets of petals. So for right now, let's just start with the petals. We're going to start by inking them. And as always, with inking flowers, I don't worry too much to be exact. Because in general, nature isn't all that exact. So some are a little darker, some are a little lighter. You can do just the edges if you want to, or you can fill in, in a little bit. This one I'm going to fill in just a little bit to kind of give it a little bit of extra color. Deepen the orange from that bright neon orange that I have. And this will go pretty quickly. Because of the way the gerberas are shaped, we don't really have to do both sides, just the top side will be fine. And one more. Of course you can do your flowers in whatever color you like, whatever makes you happy. I was in the mood, obviously, for some bright colors today. So I chose this lovely orange. Okay, so we've got our flowers inked. Before we go any further on the flowers, let's just move on, do a little bit more inking. Get that all out of the way. We're going to ink our leaves and our sepal. the leaves. Just kind of hit the outside edge. That's really all you need to do. Just trying to take off the sharpness of the cut. There's only a couple of leaves so they'll go really quick. If you haven't tried them yet, these little finger sponges are pretty nice. They work pretty well. They don't last forever, but I do like using them. I wish I could say it keeps my fingers totally clean, but that's not quite the case. All right. And our sepal. Then we can put away our inks. We won't be doing any inking on the center of the flower. I suppose you could, but I don't see any reason to. Unless you just love to ink. Okay, so we're going to set these green pieces aside, our leaves and our sepal. And the next thing we're going to do is curl the petals. Now just use a small dowel or a chopstick, something. Um, I use a fairly small diameter one here. Um, I made it a little more comfortable by putting some pencil holders on it. And all we're going to do Curl our leaves downward. Be sure to get a good grip at the base of the petal because these are fairly thin petals and they could fall off or get pulled off pretty easily just as if you were doing it with a real flower. You're going to follow the same process which each, with each of these three sets of petals. Curl them down. Third one, kind of do this assembly style, yes, yeah, so I know. I apologize for these videos. I don't really have a great setup and I'm still very much learning how to do the videos. 
you want to see great videos, go over to Dreaming Tree. Um, Leo Kowal does some excellent, excellent tutorials and has some great files over there. If you're just starting out, wonderful place to start. Okay, the next thing we're going to do with each of these is we're going to fold them up toward the center to give them some height. They're still, cur they're still curled outward, but now we've got kind of a cup shape. We're making that daisy look now. Again, folding it up on each of these to do exactly the same thing. And the third one. By the way, if you haven't done it already, this is a good time to turn on your hot glue gun because we will be using it just a little bit not too long from now. Okay, so we've, now we've got our daisy petals all formed. We're going to work on the leaves next. Leaves tend to get forgotten and you can do an awful lot with them to make them look nice. These are pretty flat. Um, you can see there's not very, they're not very interesting either side. <clears throat> if you have one available, I recommend using one of these ball tools and I would recommend using some foam core. There's some, not foam core. You can use foam core, but foam sheet. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, go over the lines that the, that the Cricut made, and we're going to make an embossed to look on those. We're just gonna trace over them. I'm using a dried out ballpoint pen. I find it a lot easier to use, but you could use your, your uh, embossing tool or your, your stylus, scoring stylus. And press nice and hard. I'm using, again, I'm doing this over a foam sheet. Be careful toward the center. It's easy to poke holes in it, the center. And all I'm doing is making sure that I'll be able to see these lines on the other side, because that's the side we're going to work on with our ball tool. So I'm going to take the ball tool and in between those scores, embossed lines that we did. I'm just going to rub. What we're trying to do is give some definition, a little bit of a rise to the leaf between those. I noticed when I was looking at the images that I used to guide me in creation, creating this uh, flower, that there was some texture to the leaves and I found it very interesting. So I'm trying to, to somewhat recreate that. So now I've gone in between each of them, and as we turn it over, you can hopefully see that it's got some texture to it. So the last thing to do is just give it a little bit of shape. You can curl up or down, make it a little random, maybe at the very end, give it a little twist up or down, whatever. All we're trying to do is give it some extra shape. So instead of being this flat looking leaf, which is kind of boring, we now have this lovely looking leaf. So we're going to do that process one more time, or lots more times if it turns out that you have more than two leaves per flower. Now if you don't have a pen with your machine uh, to have drawn the lines, not to worry, you can either use your scoring stylus, or if, if you don't have that, just draw the lines in so they kind of look like they're down the center and have veins. Turning it over and using our ball tool to rub in between those lines on the opposite side. We're not doing this on the front side, this is the back side. Because we want it to be convex on the front side. flower is actually pretty easy, particularly if you happen to have the right tools available. Okay, now this one's ready to curl. Doesn't take much. I'm just bringing it out a little bit. And the other one I 
curl that. Let's curl this one down. Okay. And we've got our two leaves. We're done with that. For the sepal, we're just going to curl these pieces down. I designed this flower using Inkscape, and by using a couple of techniques in Inkscape, it's pretty easy to design flowers. So if you haven't learned it yet and are up for a little bit of a challenge, I recommend Inkscape highly for doing your own designs. Uh, Illustrator's wonderful, but it costs an awful lot of money. Okay, well we're now ready to work on the center of the flower. We're just going to put these aside. These are our pieces for the center of the flower. And this is the flower stem I'm going to use. I'm using the craft paper wrapped ones because I like them so much more than just the straight wire ones. You can use straight wire, you can even use a um, bamboo skewer if you want. I like the flexibility of, of wire, so I definitely prefer it. If you are using these craft wrapped ones, I always recommend taking a bit of glue, yeah you'll get it on your fingers, and putting at each end just making sure that it's nice and tight because we're going to be pushing that through our pieces and gluing things to it and you don't want it coming loose and this craft paper does have a tendency to come a little bit loose at times so just give it a good twist that kind of seals it down and gives it a point it is because we're going to be putting a black center on this just take one end or the other. I'll use this end since it's a little drier. And just use your magic marker or some ink, whatever. And let's color that black just toward the end, you know, a quarter inch or so. Doesn't need to be very much. That will kind of hide it inside when we push it through. <clears throat> All right, the first thing I'm going to do is give this piece here a bit of a curl. You don't have to do this, it just helps a little. <clears throat> Not used to talking. I'm so used to being isolated. I talk to my husband, but other than that, not too much solid talking for videos and things. <clears throat> I'm just starting wrapping this. There's a little tab on there. Just glue it on. If you have them available, grab one of these little um, clothespins or something and just hold a bobby pin, something just to hold it tight. We're just going to let that dry while we work on the next piece. This is set enough. And after we've got that set on the stem, we're just going to put a thin line of glue around it along the base of it and then it's going to wrap it. Try to keep it straight. Doesn't have to be perfect, but the straighter you can keep it the better. And just snug it up. This will open up. We don't have to do that at the moment. We'll do that with the next step. So there's two pieces of the black center. This is the second piece here. And we're going to, well, it's easier to put the glue on, honestly, first. Then slide it through, glue side up. And just push it against it. And while you're pushing it against it, if you want to, you can open up that center. First daisy I did, we didn't have the second center piece surrounding it, and it looked a little bit bare, so one extra cut. Now I would warn you when you cut these, in case you haven't discovered it already, that they are very, very delicate pieces. So you want to make sure you've got a good mat and check your blade to make sure it doesn't have stuff hanging off of it. Okay, so now we've got 
the black center. Take the smaller of your two yellow pieces. Put some glue on it around the hole. Slide it up. And just hold it for a second. Let it sit. Now, if for some reason that very first centerpiece comes loose, I'd suggest replacing it onto your uh, wire or your skewer or whatever with a little bit of hot glue. Sometimes I've had problems with it not sticking well, although using the little clothespins to give it a chance to set has helped a lot. Slide this up, stagger it a bit if you can. All right, now what we're going to do is try to fold the black up as much as possible. that. It's going to be random. In fact, it's a good thing for it to be a little bit random. And then the center, just use a skewer or something to kind of open it up because if you try to use your fingers, it tends to push everything out. What we're trying to do is get a little bit of a mix in here. All right, so now we've got this. This is our center. And we're ready to put everything together. Right. All three of these petal sets are the same size, so you don't have to which order, worry about which one goes in which order. This one looks a little flatter. That one looks a little taller. So I'm going to use the one that looks a little taller. It doesn't really matter because we'll adjust those anyway. Well, actually, I'm going to do this differently. Um, I'm going to actually put these together put these together here on the table now I'm lining this up and I'm not staggering it in the middle I'm staggering it about a third of the way in and this one I'm staggering two-thirds of the way in okay, so the lot is to try to get much as possible both depth and filling. I'm just using my fingers to kind of pull these up, give it a little bit more fluff. I don't want too much. Okay, and then the sepal we'll put on the bottom while we're at it. Let's put a little bit of glue right there. As much at the center as you can. And then after that, fluff it up if you want to. And we're ready to put this together. Okay. So that's where we're going to use some glue here. Slide it up. to look like a flower. It's a good thing because we're pretty much finished with it. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can use a little bit of hot glue. Um, I do just to, I just want to make sure that it's fixed in place. I just like to put a little drop of glue there, not much. drop of glue right at the base. And we'll just use that to kind of set. I am not a fan of hot glue. Constantly getting these spider webs over everything. But sometimes it serves a purpose and it does tend to keep things keep things in place. So that's a good thing. Okay, we're up to our stem and our leaves. And then we'll be finished. All right, 
So I'm just going to take a piece of floral tape. It's a little longer than the stem. stretch to get sticky up and starting right underneath the sepal just kind of wrap it to get it started and then we're just going to continue to wrap it around down a couple of inches. You can go ahead and add your first leaf. I think a little bit further than that. I don't like the leaf to be hitting the flower. That should be good. I find it easier just to kind of wrap around once or twice rather than trying to twist it around. And go down a couple more inches there and add another leaf. I try to keep it somewhat opposite. And then you can finish wrapping up. I only included two leaves flower when I did these because I find that if I get more than three or four flowers in an arrangement that sometimes it's a little leaf heavy so I don't like that and here we go <laughs> 